Northern Mexico continues to amaze me. Coming up are more epic videos from the country's largest state, Chihuahua. After visiting the city itself and Ciudad Cuauhtémoc in 2021, I'm back once again. We've already explored the monstrous urban metropolis of Ciudad Juárez, and over the next few videos we're heading even further afield, traipsing out into the desert and discovering that even in the most inhospitable of environments, life finds a way. But today we're discovering a quality not frequently attributed to the north, spectacular beauty. What if you could stumble across a city just as pretty as Guanajuato or San Miguel? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Good morning everyone and welcome to Mexico once again on this rather sunny Saturday in April in Chihuahua. By the way, it's not just any old Saturday, it's Semana Santa at the moment, or Holy Week in English, otherwise known as Easter. And I didn't know it was Easter until like two days ago. Thanks for telling me. Let's see what we can find. As usual, we're starting off in the centre of town with this lovely fountain here. And I've got one question to begin with. Is this the Guanajuato of Chihuahua? Very possibly. I did get those vibes when I first got here last night with kind of cobbly streets and cobbled roads and colonial architecture. But at the same time, you've got rather modern architecture as well. Even this cathedral, the Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. And the thing I wanted to say about my first impressions of Parral. When it comes to this sort of larger region of Southern Chihuahua, Durango and Zacatecas, it reminds me of Zacatecas as well with these sort of low rise colorful buildings. You do get this mix of colonial architecture, but also that modern feel, even Catedras. We'll go in there later. Oh my God, I just caught the back end of one of those touristy bus things, but it's like a, a tractor or something. You've got a sign out there, Semana Santa. Um, I've been in Mexico a number of times in the past at Easter, but honestly, it's one thing I don't really know much about in terms of celebrations and customs and traditions. Perhaps we will find out over the next two videos. So shockingly, Parral is well known for many things. Probably for me, the number one thing that I think of when I think of this city is the place that Francisco Villa, Pancho Villa, was assassinated in 1923. He was a former bandit that became a prominent general in the Mexican Revolution. So, you know, this city has you know immense history. Also, silver mining. You can tell I'm excited, right? As with many cities and towns in Mexico, central, northern, everywhere, right? There's an immense history with silver mining particularly and in 1629 or possibly 31 depending on which website you read um, a, a lieutenant lieutenant came here and licked a rock and identified that silver was deposited in the rock thus silver mining came into fruition hold that thought i was just about to go into a main attraction until i realized i had no cash on me brilliant so i've come looking for an atm and look what i found i found this other square area with this other church or cathedral up there with the kiosk and the parral sign behind it and on the subject of Pancho Villa apparently they do like a reenactment thing here with like mock-up weapons and costumes and things to you know commemorate his death um, like a yearly thing that's crazy I would love to see that um, we've got a kiosk behind me of course and oh there's that uh, 
touristy bus thing over there, the tractor thing. I've got to say, Peral is top tier elite. I love it. Look at that sign, it's so different. Amazing, and that church up there is stunning. Look at this. Look at the beautiful stonework and the detail on those figures up there. And up there, this is why it kind of reminds me of Guanajuato, you know the uh, La Pipila, that's what it's called, in Guanajuato. Brilliant, I'm so glad I found this. Juan Rangel de Biesma, this statue here. Remember I said about the silver thing and the rock that he licked? Well, this is the guy, and he's got his sword there. This is so Zacatecas, especially what that lady is taking a photo of, these buildings. Like these, yeah, these low rise buildings with the classic yellow, blue, red. But then look, you have this bonkers, like very modern hotel. Hotel San Jose. Here's the coat of arms, I guess. Yeah, that's the old name, San Jose del Parral. And I was just looking at it. It's nice to look at the detail of these things, isn't it? So I guess that's like a soldier representing revolution. You've got a church last cathedral. Um, is this representing like indigenous peoples? And then over here, this is interesting because you've got, that's the um, Mina di Pretieta that I mentioned. It's cool. was Palaza Principal and we have Art Deco alert. Pajal is not a Pueblo Mexico. It's not one of those central Mexican cities that has that overly painted central area for tourism. Yes, that does exist here a little bit, but not to the same extent. But outside that central area, let's be realistic, investment doesn't go everywhere in a city. It primarily goes to that central area. So you'll see a little bit later in this video kind of where I'm staying. Okay, we're back where I was meant to be. This building in front of me is the Palacio Alvarado and it's a palace, basically, formerly owned by the Alvarado family, which was a wealthy family back in the day. And you might remember Quinto Gameros, the mansion in Chihuahua City itself. That mansion, uh, the family who lived there actually had to leave during the Mexican Revolution, whereas this one was so rich that they were able to pay the government, essentially, to kind of allow them to stay in it during the revolution and it's very grand apparently it's got lovely European architecture and particularly artwork in the entrance area I'm outside the Museo Francisco Villa and what I didn't know was that this is the exact spot where in 1923 him and his bodyguards were ambushed and assassinated and este sitio fue inmolado yeah, where he was assassinated. 1923, 20th of July. Epic moment. There were many of these sort of quieter squares like Plaza Juarez, a little bit further out of the center, which are very peaceful with that kiosco in the middle with the kind of dilapidated paintwork on the outside. Look at that. And you're not gonna believe this. But praise be to Jesus Christ, as it is Easter weekend, I found this immense monolithic horse monument. Look at the size of this absolute beast. There's a pigeon up there. Hi, Han. What an absolute legend. I love this. It probably seems smaller on camera, but honestly, in real life, it's overpowering, towering over me like a ginormous horse. Anyway, um, I was going to say about northern Mexico because I've really been reminded here of the fact that sometimes in northern Mexico it's incredibly difficult to research things because it is less visited by people who make websites. Um, and, you know, like that cathedral, the uh, cathedral in earlier in the video, I don't know when it was built, I haven't got a clue, can't find the information anywhere. But isn't that sometimes the wonder of travel? Sometimes we haven't got the information, we just have to look at a ginormous horse and say, wow, 
brilliant. I'm assuming this is who sculpted it, Lourdes Treviso. It's absolutely monolithic and I love the detail on it. Look, look at his shoes. It's got that little thingy on the back. What are they called? Okay, I'm calling all car geeks because this is an old Datsun and I must admit I'm seeing a lot of these since I've been in the state of Chihuahua. There's a bridge there and I guess this used to be some sort of reservoir or something. Um, I've read that after the silver, the height of the silver industry here, um, in the 1930s this place was kind of deserted in a way and the growth has been rather slow because of the lack of water you know we're in the desert what do you expect but not just water but water that you can actually drink you know just look at this it's top tier and there's so much to see here i feel like out of breath with excitement of you know just how much there is to do and see here and one of the many things you can do is go to la gota di miel the drop of honey it's a doceria a sweet shop basically so I've got to be honest, I'm not the connoisseur of Mexican sweets, by the way, except Costanza chocolates in San Luis Potosi. Um, basically, I just looked at what they had and thought, oh, that looks nice. So I got it. Um, this is a conchita. It's like shaped like a shell. You can get a two pack as well. It looks very sort of sweet. <laughs> and this is a, um, I can't remember the name of it now. It's like some sort of nut bar. I think it's got nuts in. It looks squidgy, it looks fudgy, maybe caramelly, I don't know. Let's tuck in. OMG to the ultimate Jesus. It's like fudge. Mm -hmm. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. I bit my tongue. Yeah, it's incredibly sweet. It's like someone just poured a bucket of sugar down my throat. But fudge is always like that, isn't it? Mm. Now it's time for this other fudgy bar thing. Kind of looks like a ginormous poo. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. Mm. But it's not poo. <laughs> like a nutty fudge bar. Oh, and it has an interesting taste. Mm. It has the consistency of fudge, but it also has the nuts. Please shut up. I'm back on the shell one, um, that's my favourite. Um, it's more sort of classic and traditional and plain fudge. Um, did you know that dolces from this city are well known across the world, apparently? I didn't know this. They've been exported to the Vatican City, Washington and London. I've never seen these in London. Right, after that dolce de leche overload, it really was, I need to walk it off before we have the other dish that I've got planned for this video. We're heading up to Mina La Prieta, a classic example of Mexican silver mining. Um, there is the way up right next to where I'm staying, like two streets away, but I just saw another route that looks more exciting. It's a bit more rocky and a bit more me. But first, trust me to find an abandoned building. How orgasmic is this? Is this Real de Catorce? Reminds me of that um, old abandoned church I went to. Three years ago now I was there. Was it like an old house or something? I can only assume. Yeah, I'm not gonna clamber down there. Actually, I'm gonna clamber a little bit. Wonderful. These intricately designed archways are still intact. Look at these little holes in the wall. I wonder what they, are, they were. Wowzers. So you have to be careful. I don't want to fall down there and break my leg. It appears I found the other entrance. Hallelujah. We're going up there. We're walking up this incline. Look to my left. You can see the wonderful views over Parral. This awesome view behind me kind of goes with my evaluation of Chihuahua as a state itself in terms of travel because it really is just a ginormous desert with occasional cities and towns dotted around. Meaning that you cannot come to Chihuahua for like three days as you would go to San Miguel de Allende or something and expect to be able to see many things because honestly the size, the vast expanse of the desert is never ending. And 
you really need some time to explore. You know, it took three hours to get here from Chihuahua. It's not like a little day trip. Ooh, look at this. Oh my God. Wowzers. It's literally like some sort of deep chasm. So it seems to be closed, but not just closed, like it hasn't seen life since 1987. I think this is probably somewhere where people come to do crack. See what I mean about, you know, being real? Not everywhere is San Miguel de Allende, like across a whole city. You do get places like this. I know that that's not something that YouTubers want to show because they have to perpetuate the myth of perfection in Mexico, but this isn't perfect. Um, but I don't care. Is that piss in that bottle? There are holes in barbed wire fences. Um, but to be honest, I want to get where those women are up there by that statue. How did they get up there? Okay, I think this could be a possible route. Bollocks. I'm going to give up soon with my ridiculous trek into the desert. There is no way up there. I'm adamant. Those people were holograms, I swear. I'm literally in the desert. I give up. Officially, there is no way of getting to Jesus. Okay, amigos, I'm not going to be defeated. Um, drink. I saw myself in a shop window. I think I caught the sun. Um, there's some food down there. I'm going to see if I can get it for takeaway. Go home, have a rest. I'm sure there's another way up to this statue. Okay, I'm in this random place. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Kind of sería Bonanza, I think. I'm having dobladas, which are classic in Parral. Again, they've been recommended to me. Um, let's see what they're like. I'm getting papas y carne and frijoles y queso. We also have barbacoa, picadillo, chicharrón. Uh, oh, rojo, why didn't I get that? And also gorditas, but we've had them millions of times. I've never had dobladas. Okay, I'm back at my place, Airbnb. Nice and quiet because it was too dark in that place. All right, so there's the papas y carne. There's a lot of potato in that. And just like in Juarez, we have the classic frijoles y queso. And I like this frijoles because it's like proper homemade. Look, it's not like the really creamy one. It's actually got proper beans in it. Right, terrible filming angle. And I guess this is like a burrito, but it's not rolled up. So it's like a large tortilla, as you can see. And she puts the filling on it, then puts it on the hot plate thing to kind of give it that brownie, golden brown um, look. Um, and here we go, and obviously it's flour, tortilla, not corn. Mmm. Oh. You know what? I complained about frijoles in Juarez, but this is better because I can really taste the beans, the whole beans. And that golden brown coating kind of gives it a nice, um, better feel, you know, than that soft, burrito thing top to here okay i've changed i've washed my face and i'm at the entrance that i was at this morning um that i should have gone to mina la prieta look over there that's kind of where i was a little bit before up there this looks rather ghostly doesn't it abandoned and dilapidated doesn't it look like somewhere from the X-Files where Mulder and Scully would like run away from an alien human hybrid or something or see an alien like in the darkness? Nina La Prieta. You know, I think this is actually better than going down in the mine. The reason I say I'm not gonna do the mine tour here is, you know, I've done it four times before. Um, darkness, head injury. Look at this, so industrial. Wowzers. Parral, you have really come through today because this is exactly my kind of thing. What an absolute legend in terms of history in Mexico. Look up there. We are going urbex, like I used to do in Serbia all the time. Oh, these banisters are a bit rickety. They've seen better days, that's for sure. Wowzers. Just 
Just imagine this being in use in, you know, 1800s. This is insane. Look at those chains hanging up there. Corrugated metal sheeting. Look at the size of those chains up there. Ginormous. I can't even begin to imagine what all this machinery is. You know, I'm not a mining expert. That kind of looks like a cannon. Obviously it's not. Um, some ginormous pipe and cogs and gears. I'm sorry, but I love abandoned places like this. It's just so fascinating and exciting. I'm a bit of a geek with these things, in case you haven't realised. Beaches in Cancun? No thanks, give me this any day. Okay, taking into account my ridiculously epic fail of a journey to the mine, I feel like Parral has just gone top tier. Look, we've got rocky faces behind me. We've got more mine area up there. It's brilliant, love it. engine things, I don't know. Um, as I said, I don't know mining. Um, but it's just so awesomely industrial and metallic. I think this is where I was before. Oh no, it's not. It's somewhere new. You've got a random hole down there. Look at that. Oh shit, almost fell over. What an absolute hell zone. But I love hell zones. And the roof as well had that corrugated Probably plastic, maybe, um, that has holes in it now. Random room in there. Oh, now what's happening? It's like an air raid siren. This is an original piece of machinery. Oh, it like smells. I can smell like the oil, you know. I think I finally found it. I've got to watch my head. Um, yeah, you go past that bit of random oily machinery and here we are at the Vista Panorama, Panoramica, whatever. Oh, I think we're here. Oh, praise be. Where's Jesus? He's up there. I think if I'd never been to Mexico and someone asked me to draw a picture of what I thought Mexico looked like, this would be it. Okay, it took a while, but as always, we got there in the end. There's the statue. We finally made it. I can't believe it. And look at this view. Again, stunning. There's the mine down there. Muy espectacular. Ah, Dios mío, abuelita, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I feel like I've had quite a thorough tour of the city today. That's where I got lost down there. Here's the mine. I was, I'm staying over there. I went all the way over there. Ah, amazing. Look at that smoke rising in the distance. Okay, as the sun starts to drop, this is my final thought of this video, and it's very quick. I asked at the beginning, is this the Guanajuato of the North? And my answer to that is, yes, it is, except it's better. Do with that what you will. Lovely, thanks for watching. As I said, I might still be here in the next video, or I might be in a different city or town a little bit further north as I head back to Chihuahua. I'm not sure, I'll have to think about it. Thanks for watching, I know this was a long one. I've enjoyed myself, but sometimes the long videos are the epics. So um, I'll see you next time, wherever I am. Catch you later.